Hello, and this is Walter Banks. Welcome to A History of Catapults. I'm Tanner Cox, and we're going to take you through this. Okay, I'm going to be giving you um, a brief description of Batara types of catapults and a nice um, historical lesson on what they used to use. And I'll talk a little bit about the physics and the energy transfer that it goes in, uh, within the catapults. And I'll talk a little bit about our project as we're Walter. So the main two types of catapults we've been able to compile from research are mangonel and ongar. And, but there also is trebuchet and ballista, but of course these are banned from this project. So a mangonel was the, really the first type, major type. It was actually used by Romans. And it was more like based off of ballista so they could throw larger projectiles instead of bolts. And it was used more in like, like battles and instead of sieges because it went much farther. The onagar um, was actually base, was a lot more powerful and had a lot more arc on it. It was aimed after a donkey because it would kick because it was so powerful. And it was really used to lob things over castle walls during sieges. So the types of projectiles is the um, iconic burning pitch, which is often like just you hear about it all the time. Well, of course, there's rocks and then... The main three unique ones we have is diseased bodies, which was used during the Black Plague to spread it, was actually the first form of biological warfare that we have documented. And then there's Greek fire and, and or quick lime, which is in the pictures of like the weird fire breathing thing, which is actually the first form of chemical warfare. And it was just pretty much like spraying, like just this, it was pretty much a mount, mounted flamethrower almost. And then burning sand was more of like a strategic idea. It was, they would heat sand up and they would launch it and it would be like this really like psychological thing because it's this like big fiery wall and it would get stuck in your armor and it would just cause mass mayhem. So, as you can imagine, how that would be horrible. So I'm going to start talking about the physics of catapults here. So the main ideas we want to cover in here is the types of energy that is stored within catapults, how this energy is stored, and kind of how this energy is transferred as well in the process of a catapult firing. So the main types of energy, you've got three main types. There's a potential gravitational energy, a kinetic energy, and a potential energy due to some form of an elastic material. However, the last one can change depending upon the type. If you're using a trebuchet, you may or may not have this potential energy due to a, an elastic material. It's more due to a gravitational energy because of the weight. So how this energy is stored? Well, again, this is depending upon the type of catapult you use. In our type of version of the catapult, we there's three main types that we sort it. It's stored in the torsion, the tension, and in gravity. Uh, torsion is kind of in the rope, and as is tension, but the tension is in a bent cavalier form, almost a bow that would be mounted on the top of the catapult with ropes uh, tied to the ends of it. And so the en the um, let's see the energy would be stored along the wood of wood of the of the arm and as well as through the ropes. So this transfer of energy. So at the very bottom of the catapult's path, after you've wound up and you've wound up the coils to the maximum to the highest point that they can be at, you've got the high the potential energy of the elastic material is at the highest. You know, you've got this really tight string, you've got this really tight rope, whatever you use, and all there's going to be a lot of energy stored in that. The moment that that catapult is released, all of that elast potential energy, the elastic material, is transferred into a kinetic energy as the uh, velocity increases. Also, a historical thing to this, uh, the, these catapults that use this type of torsion were so powerful that they had to hook up a team of horses to pull down the arms. And so it, it was a very effective process uh, compared to the Benton Cavalier. You can imagine how powerful that would be. So once this kinetic energy is gone, it turns into gravitational energy at the very top of its, at the very end of the catapult's launch. Once the catapult is at full upright position, only about a 90 degree angle, all that kinetic energy is now turned into a gravitational potential energy. And this is our reference page. and. As you can see, all the pictures we used are from realworldphysics.com as well as Google Images. 
So these are some of the plans that we were going through, and we found a cool website, stormthecastle.com, and it was a bunch of different diagrams and videos on how to make catapults. And we got the inspiration for the type of catapult we used. He called it a wyvern catapult, but it was really more of a mangonel kind of torsion catapult. So we've got two, another picture here, it's kind of diagrams, the same thing. We had an arm, and this is just kind of the base. And right under the cross piece, there'd be a rope that would be tied uh, with things on the side that we could crank. And this, again, this idea was taken from stormthecastle.com. He had a bunch of videos on there that showed us how to make the catapult. So this is kind of in the early stages of it. We we're just setting up one of the arms, just trying to see, you know, how tall is this going to work? How tall should we make this? Should we add anything to it or whatever? Um, we also had to be very careful about how we marked it because if we cut the holes in the wrong spot, we would have to start all over. And so we just had to be really careful, but this is pretty much all the amount of wood we really used. Um, we had to be very precise with our angles and such because the energy, we just had to make it the most efficient way possible to store the energy in this yeah. catapult. We had to make sure that it was supported enough too so that if we were, you know, if this wood were to smack another piece of the wood that it wouldn't send anything flying. So we tried to make it as sturdy as possible and that's, again, as Walter was saying, that's why we use such precise measurements. So this was me cutting the wood when he went to Home Depot. We had a few pieces, and we had general ideas. As you, mean, uh, you saw in the descript in the pictures, we said we want one piece to be a certain length. We want another piece to be another length. But when we started building it, we noticed there were some pieces that were too long or some pieces that weren't long enough. So we had to kind of mix and match some pieces. Um, but it ended up well. Um, so this was the basic frame. It's kind of on the heavier side, but it's more compact than w some of the catapults that I've seen, and we were, re we were really happy of what turn how it turned out. It's really compact and really sturdy, so it could absorb um, how no matter how much energy we would throw at it, and it would just stay stable. And that was the main idea of this entire frame. If you'll notice, the ends of the catapult are not f completely on onto the sides. We did this intentionally to give it a little more uh, support and stability. Um, just kind of give it a, so when that kick happened that it would be kind of remain firmer to the ground. Um, it was kind of funny. Actually, we kind of put them backwards. So we had to like undrill it and reformat it. So we were just all a little frustrated. And so that that's pretty much the point of this picture. Yeah, it took us, a, took us a while to get everything right. Again, this is, this is the cross piece that we put on and, um, we got a piece of oak, which worked out really well. It's really strong, and it, c it could absorb the um, the arm, which you'll see at the bottom laying on the table. It's kind of hard to see because it blends in, but that, was again, was oak. Um, originally, we were going to use the um, another piece of 2x4, but then we just discovered that it would just be way too heavy, and it wouldn't go very far. So oak is probably two or three times stronger than that, um, than the plywood so it's a much lighter and much faster so we got a we got a lot more efficient energy use out of it and that is our history of catapults uh, thank you for watching